I'm ready. At this time then, I'd like to call the regular town board meeting for January 2021 to order. Would we'll please rise and pledge allegiance to the flag, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Post. Here. White. Here. Underhill. Here. Michael Ack? Here. Zambito? Here. At this time, I'm calling the public hearing to order regarding local law number one of 2021, a moratorium on solar energy systems. If there are any people who wish to speak, um, please unmute yourself. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Kathy Antonelli. Are you just taking the list of names or did you want me to speak now? No, Kathy, you can state your name and address and um, then please try to limit your comments to five minutes. Okay. Um, Kathy Antonelli, it's 5061 Ellicott Street Road. And um, I'm here because uh, we obviously have a, a possibility of a solar farm going in behind my house and um, was hoping that depending on what you do with the moratorium, that that would maybe put a stop to ours while you can we can further investigate um, whether it should be appropriate or not to put in right behind people's houses. So that's why I'm here and I'm hoping I can get some more information um, regarding the moratorium. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to speak and this is Tim Morrow, 5049 Ellicott Street Road. Um, you write me down. Last night I spoke before I sh should have, so. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, feel free to speak now, Tim. I have concerns, Greg. Um, what's going on? Um, I want to go way back when they changed this from residential to agricultural. How come the neighbors weren't notified when you guys did that? Um, I have other concerns, but I. you can go ahead with your meeting and then let me know when I can speak because I speak out of hand. Well, you're, this is the only opportunity this evening to speak. So um, this is a you, public hearing on a, this is a public hearing, just to make it clear, on a local law that the town of Batavia is proposing to vote on this evening that will uh, create a moratorium for uh, approximately 180 days on any new applications after this date for solar farms and solar projects. This will not impact projects already in process, but to give the town board and the rest of the community an opportunity to address and amend local zoning law regarding solar energy projects of all scales. We hope to get participation from the from the group. So that's the purpose of this public hearing is to speak to this particular proposed local law. Hey, I would like to have an opportunity to be able to speak as well. And your name and address? Uh, this is Dan Ruder and Kathy Ruder, 10031 Harper Road, Corfu. 
Um, I understand, you know, that the meeting is in regards to uh, the proposal for a moratorium, and um, I would just like to know how it would affect, you know, an application that uh, would have been submitted prior uh, to this meeting and uh, prior to the moratorium, um, and if it will, uh, if there would be any. Uh, action placed on a application uh, submitted prior to this moratorium. Um, we have a concern for an application submitted uh, approximately a week ago prior to this. And just wondering if that would, uh, having that application submitted, if it would hold a, basically hold a place in, in queue under uh, the, the existing ordinance well, again, I'm, I can't answer your question at this time. This is a public hearing, but uh, you can certainly reach out to the town of Batavia zoning officer. Hey, Greg, can I ask you something? Well, you can ask, but I'm not. A, I'm not here to answer questions. This is an opportunity for the public to be heard regarding this local law. So, okay, as town supervisor. You guys are allowing these farms to go up anywhere and everywhere without, without looking at the community, residential people, taxpayers, and just putting them up. Um, look at State Street. You guys approved all that. If I lived on State Street and had to look at that fenced in crooked solar farm, how come you guys aren't looking out for us? I mean, when was this change from residential, agricultural to commercial? How come I wasn't notified? How come the neighbors weren't notified? I mean, you guys got to look at this. I mean, this what? is what you're doing to the community. So I'm concerned. What are you doing with my value of my house? I mean, you guys got to answer some questions and quit putting it off because you guys don't want to change because you okayed this for Partridge, but we're not going to change anything. I mean, you guys got to answer some questions for us, please. I mean, before you know it, Behind my house is Nichols, you know that, and another solar farm's coming in because I can go out in my mailbox and get a check. So the landowner and solar company are making the money. What about the town and the taxes? Am I getting a tax cut? Nobody will answer anything. All we do is say, yay, nay, let's move on, and we'll do what we want. Again, the purpose of the moratorium is to reevaluate the town's zoning on solar projects. This process started seven years ago. It was in, uh, it took about two years to develop. There was public participation. People were invited to meetings. It's not something that was jumped onto. Um, over the last five years, we've had a number of applications and a number of projects that have gone through the process according to the law. Uh, it's the board's intent to reevaluate whether or not the regulations and rules and zoning still apply or should be amended. We're looking for public participation in that process. I will be appointing a committee. If you have any interest at all in steering the future of the community solar energy, I would strongly suggest that you send your name and your availability to the town clerk so that we can put you on a list of candidates for a committee that will be formed moving forward. Um, to take a holistic view at this process. This is how things are done. Uh, I understand. Greg, it's Brittany. Yes. 
Um, so I'd like to just ask a couple questions, which I know you can't answer right now. So my name is Brittany Wickup. I live at 9280 Alexander Road in Batavia. And as we all know, I serve on the zoning board. So my concern um, is kind of twofold. So one, obviously Genesee County is a large agricultural district. And when we did amend zoning laws and worked on the comprehensive plan, which I was also part of, we sort of set these rules in place regarding solar farms so that we were limiting size. Um, and part of that was to protect our agricultural space as well. So I'm just hoping going forward, we're still giving that a lot of thought just based on our farmers in our community as well. So that would um, obviously be one of my main concerns. Um, and the fact that we did just do the comprehensive plan a few years ago. And of course there are changes that do come about and we do need to make adjustments, but I'm just hoping that we're considering all of the factors here as to why we set a size limit. That, that's all I wanted to say. Well, thank you, Brittany. This is Kathy Antonelli again. With what Brittany said, um, limiting sizes to the amount, uh, to the acreage of these solar farms, right now the proposal out my way is to put 220 acre farms together or two, two different solar farms, but together. What's to say that we couldn't do that with a thousand acres by just putting one next to another, next to another, next to another. And that defeats the purpose of limiting size in an agricultural area or whatever you want to call it. So I, I support the moratorium for you guys to please take a look at this and see what is actually happening and what, what's going on here. Um, so I'm glad she brought that up. And I also wanted to point out that ours is going to be in essence close to 40 acres when all is said and done. Granted, they're two separate lots, but they're right next to each other, which doubles the size limit that's currently in place. Thank you. Uh, Greg, it's Russ Romano. I live at 406 Garden Drive in Batavia. I'm on the meeting to represent my client, Jean Penny. I'm a realtor. She owns a 80 acre parcel of land on Lewiston Road, uh, just about 15 houses up from Applebee's restaurant on Lewiston Road. The 80 acres has been vacant agricultural residential zoning for approximately 30 years. There's been no farming activity. Mrs. Penny is a widow. She got the uh, ownership through uh, the estate of her husband and she started selling the property or proposing to sell it about four years ago. She's currently under a contract with a solar farm development company who has been pursuing uh, the engineering and doing the due diligence as part of the agreement so she asked me to join in the meeting here to state her case uh, that she feels that she would be harmed uh, this far along in the process if a moratorium was to stop what has been going on for about four months on her particular property. And I know you can't answer that question tonight. And I look forward to talking to Dan Lang and other people on the board if they have questions but this is uh, part of the initial process was, according to my understanding, was going to comply with the current uh, zoning, uh, excuse me, this, the, the uh, town ordinance with regard to solar field development. So I just told Mrs. Penny I would represent her uh, and state her case uh, tonight as a landowner with 80 acres. And we talk about preserving land for agricultural. And as a realtor, I understand that. I've been doing this 47 years. I understand how important it is on the zoning side. 
<clears throat> but there's also a part of solar energy becoming more and more popular, not just in the town of Batavia, but in the state of New York. And I believe that the town board is responsible enough to make decisions on one application at a time in hopes that there will be a balance between solar field development, the concerns of some of the people who've already spoken this evening about how that's going to be done. And I'm sure that the town will take that into consideration, conduct public hearings regarding this type of development. But I'm concerned about the moratorium for 180 days uh, could create a problem uh, for Mrs. Penny. That, that's my concern. Thank you. Thank you, Rosa. I'll make the comment. Our uh, our local law says 180 days. My goal uh, a month ago in our conversation was to try to get this expedited and do it in as uh, short a period of time as possible, um, with the maximum participation from members of the community um, to assist town staff in coming to any amendments that we may consider. I mean, there's there's two ways to look at all of this. We're just looking for some direction from those that are interested and involved and participating uh, in the process. So thank you for your comments, Russ. Yep, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Uh, okay. Greg, there's a Brian that would like to speak. He's been raising his hand. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Morosco. I don't You're know welcome. if I said it correctly. Uh, just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Brian Madigan. Uh, I work for a company called Renewable Properties, and uh, we uh, would like to have a seat at the table with the town while you uh, enter into the moratorium. Um, we have an interest in developing uh, solar projects in uh, the town of Tavia, so I wanted to, I guess, state for the record that uh, we would like to remain engaged. And I've spoken, I believe, with Daniel Lang uh, a couple times. So appreciate the, uh, the cooperation and coordination. And we look forward to. <laughs> I didn't catch that. Is Are you still there? Uh, yes, I'm all I'm done. Okay, it broke up. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, well, I, I just wanted to state for the record that uh, uh, we have an interest in uh, developing a solar projects in the town of Batavia, and we would like to remain engaged uh, in the process. So we appreciate any opportunity to uh, continue the conversation while you are potentially in, in the moratorium. So. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Yes. Uh, this is Nancy Brock at 5168 Ellica Street Road. Good evening, Nancy. How are you today, Greg? Never better. Yeah, same here. So I think it's great you guys are doing the moratorium. And I guess I would like to ask, so that means that it's a little bit of a stop. And then it can go in any direction, depending on what you hear from the community? Or are there other forces at work that would affect it? Or how, how does it work? You know? Well, how it works is um, our community uh, does our does our due diligence and, and has done an incredible job in the last 15 years to uh, be inclusive. Our town board meets every single week as uh, you know, uh, until COVID hit um, in the town hall. Uh, our emails are available. We're, we're all uh, decision makers and we work very closely with our professional staff as well as our local zoning and, and uh, uh, planning boards. Um, we are committed to financing all the training necessary for them to be relevant. Um, we have a we have a, a very solid staff on the board. The process has typically been, um, and our our goal is to continue to update our comprehensive master plan and our zoning and our 
ordinances and local laws to address um, the changing world that we all live in. Uh, we were actually scheduled to do a pretty significant upgrade on not just the solar, but the zoning laws, as well as the comprehensive plan in 2020. And we had money in the budget um, for that and a number of other planning grant and planning projects. Unfortunately, 10 months ago, um, COVID hit, uh, we had to cut a million dollars out of a small local community budget um, to offset any potential threat to economic chaos, uh, which we're experiencing. Um, so we tried not to toss the baby out with the bathwater, but in the process, some of this got pushed off um, as we managed the new world under COVID. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm reinstituting the schedule. We have been inclusive um, and we, we really find the largest deficit uh, in our community is participation from the community members that should be at the table as our organization makes and, and redrafts these local laws and zoning. We try to find a fair and balanced approach and make it an educational process. So our comp plan takes almost two years to go through from front to back. Uh, land use uh, is, a, is a significant component of that. Uh, we're known as a, one of the greener communities in upstate New York. We've received hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants through NYSERDA and other uh, entities that, that fund strategic initiatives to preserve um, our environmental components. And uh, this is another opportunity for um, a committee to, to make recommendations uh, to the town board for amendments to local zoning laws regarding solar. And that's just one small Good. component of a total zoning. So if that answers your question. Right. Well, it helps. Yeah. And I think that it's, it's great that you're doing it. And I think that, you know, for so many people, it's like, oh, someone else will take care of that or someone else will participate. You know, I've got other things to do, or maybe they don't even hear about it. Some people don't read the paper or the Batavian, you know, how do you get, how do you get it out there and, uh, and reach those people that, that might want to participate? That's really a hard situation. And Greg, can I read the email that I sent to you just, uh, to this group. Do we have time for that? It's a public hearing by all means. Okay, great. Yeah, because really what it, what we're looking at is, you know, not so much, I mean, we're looking at, of course, this particular project and particular projects that are going on, but really, if you look at the big picture, the big picture is, does it make sense to use renewable energy? So I wrote that email and I'll just read it. It says renewable energy is not an efficient safe or reliable energy source it requires large quantities of non-renewable and rare earth metals or materials mining for and refining these items consumes massive amounts of conventional energy in addition to the solar energy or whatever disposal of these relatively short-lived materials is an environmental challenge to say the least we have an inexhaustible supply of hydrocarbons that are easier to acquire cheaper, more reliable, cleaner, and more environmentally friendly. Renewable energy can cost more than twice as much as conventional energy sources. To enrich solar companies and landowners, middle-class folks pay higher costs for utilities. They pay local, state, and federal taxes that are used not only for subsidies, but for other costs of implementing and cleaning up after these projects. They lose the enjoyment, and this is what really affects us in this particular situation, lose the enjoyment of their property and the beautiful country environment they chose to live in when they brought their homes. I mean, if I wanted to live in Williamsville, you know, I'd be there. This would not be so discouraging if there was a benefit to renewable energy, but if it costs more, if it's less efficient, if it results in environmental disposal and manufacturing problems, why would we possibly promote or encourage it? We need to care about the people who will be left to live with the decisions we're making today. And so it's just, is it a good choice? Is it an effective, is it a cost effective, is it efficient? Is it safe? Is it um, creating disposal problems? It, it sounds like there's so many things that it, it's not really contributing in a positive way do we want to move forward with continuing to have these programs? And I know there's a push from above, 
you know, that's a huge thing. I mean, there's there's goals and there's um, plans that they want to do by 2030 and by 2050. But again, you've got to look at the right thing. What's the right thing? What's the best thing? Not what is the politically correct thing. So that's that's all I wanted to share. Thank you, Nancy. As, as always, uh, your your opinions are valued. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Yes, I would. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you state yes, your name sir. and address? Yes, this is Chris Kirtanik and I'm vice president of a environmental group nonprofit called Save Our Environment Limited. And our group has been involved in wildlife study, environmental impact studies for over 20 years, helping adjacent communities in Genesee County and surrounding areas. Um, I just want to make some comments to where I believe things are going with Genesee County. And what I see happening is um, you've already had companies come in and obviously have already built and lease land from landowners. And I hear about this moratorium now and it makes me question if the town board, planning board, Genesee County is, is questioning their decision making now at this point. And to me, it kind of seems like maybe you're having second thoughts and it's kind of like closing a barn door after the horse is already out of the barn. But I commend you for backing up and taking a second look at it. But uh, there's so much involved with this. R right now we are um, finishing out working with the town of Barrie who's being um, in the middle of not only solar, but uh, industrial wind turbines at this time. And they're falling under the same articles in section 94C that every town in the state of New York is dealing with right now. And I've heard very little discussion in Genesee County. Initially, Article 10 started out to streamline green energy in New York State. They amended that with Article 23, and now there's what they call Section 94C, which circumvents all of those in order to streamline green energy in New York State. And what it's doing, and anybody that's not aware of this, I'm sure that the company spokesman that spoke up this evening is well aware of it, but some of the people in the rural area and the town themselves may not be, but it affects everybody because what it does is eventually going to circumvent home rule, whether it's Genesee County planning board or individual towns and their planning boards. And um, there's very little that can be done uh, once this goes fully into law and it's going to be approved uh, April 2021. And it was initiated in April 2020 and basically what it's doing um, is streamlining all efforts to have a voice basically. It's changed all the DEC laws, it's changed all the state historic preservation laws, and it's put it under the siting board in New York State, which is now under an executive director that makes the final decision. And once the applications are put in, you have 30, 30 to 60 days for adjudication period, but it's up to the executive director if, if they want to hear it. And if they think it's valid, they might hear it, but they have all rights to turn it down for any adjudication. And also in this law, it's changed where, uh, coming from an environmental standpoint, any species that are endangered, you pay up front in your application fee, which uh, they call wildlife wildlife mitigation fee um, and we're dealing with this in the town of Barrie right now so they border the Iroquois wildlife refuge where we know there's several breeding pairs of eagles it's one of the largest blue heron rookeries in New York State it's one of the largest migratory bird fly flyways and they're proposing 650 foot wind turbines in that area along with solar but the way they get around this they'll, they'll estimate what the kill ratio is that they can kill a certain amount or projected what might be killed and they pay that 
fee up front rather than kill them after the fact and get fined. This 94C <clears throat> allows them to pay the wildlife mitigation fund up front. It doesn't say it has to go back into the town or that refuge where the wildlife or the environment was destroyed, but it goes into a fund in New York State. Uh, and then ultimately what it's gonna do is allow the homeowner to circumvent any um, adjudication process in our local towns, including you, and deal directly with the executive director and any, and in the own words, anybody that reads 94C, it, it says that's the reason for this is to streamline and um, allow things to be less burdensome uh, for this project to go through. The ultimate goal in New York State, if anybody's aware of this, and it's in Article 92 or Article 23 and um, Section 94C, eventually New York State has plans on owning all these green energy facilities whether it's a solar or it's industrial wind. And once that happens, uh, we're gonna be paying our electric bill to the state of New York because they, they wanna get in the green energy business and become uh, to totally monopolizing green energy in New York State. And that's, that's the ultimate goal and it's in black and white. I'm not uh, fabricating this. You can read article 23, that is the goal for the governor to eventually have that power and so anything now um, that you're concerned with it in your land, uh, whether it's wildlife species that are being affected, no longer goes through your regional DEC offices, all at Albany and ultimately is made through the executive director. So again, I commend you for rethinking this, but it goes a lot deeper than many people uh, may know. You have to do your homework, whether you're a homeowner and as the attorney said for his client, I understand there's hardships for people and, uh, but there's a lot bigger picture where this is going. And ultimately too, New York state rural area is gonna be blanketed with wind and uh, solar. And from an environmental group standpoint, once you keep pushing species from one region to the other, there's, there's a competition for food. Eventually they're, they're being forced. We're seeing that already with the the wind projects that were in Sheldon and Orange County, we're seeing species pushed out of there, whether it's red tail, red tail hawks or other species that are affected. And you're seeing more populations in other areas where it's competing for food. So you picture this blanketing uh, New York State, and this is just the beginning of it. Um, so there's a lot of food for thought for people. And again, uh, everyone as a homeowner has to do their due, due diligence and landowner and town boards. And I think Genesee County Mr. Post and the rest of the board members need to be talking about this issue openly, what 94C is, this is happening now, and it's it's gonna be pushed through uh, as of April. So people really need to um, make themselves aware and educate themselves on this. Thank you, and and just for the record, I didn't, uh, I didn't get your name and your address um, the first time. Yeah, my name's Chris Kurtanik and I'm with Save Our Environment Limited. And we're an environmental group nonprofit from Alexander. Is that how we would contact you? Um, Save Our Environment Limited at yahoo.com. Thank you. Yes. Um, and and again, members. just to just to just to let you know, this is a town, one of 13 towns uh, in Genesee County. Uh, we are the we are the uh, probably the central town in the county. We surround the city of Batavia. Uh, we're one of 13 or uh, 13 townships, five villages and a city, uh, plus Genesee County. But um, we will be inclusive and uh, we'll, we've been very open and uh, in partnership with a lot of other communities. So we are in shared services and, and uh, certainly anything that we're doing uh, will we'll continue to be uh, uh, available to the to the general public across the county. So again, yeah. I thank you for your comments. Yeah. Just just um, to reiterate again that, but your zoning and everything you're doing now is directly affected by 94C. Are you aware of Section 94C? I am. Uh, I'm recently aware. Uh, as yes. we dive into this thing, we're all going to be better educated, and uh, yeah, uh, we're, and that has that has to be your guideline moving forward because this is happening very fast, and very few people are up on this, and unfortunately due to COVID and 
um, everything that's going on with people's life financially, what have you. Um, they're hitting people in a state of flux right now and it's happening so fast, but anybody hearing this, this is for real, it's happening. Uh, go online, 90, uh, section 94C and please read it. And really you have to use this as your guidebook moving forward for your zoning because it will eventually circumvent all the zoning you're making now. Well, we're aware there have been significant changes since we adopted our local law five years ago. Uh, it's our purpose now to revisit that and try to address changes. Not only, I mean, we, we have to upgrade because there's technology that wasn't invented five years ago, including battery storage. There's a whole bunch of other things that uh, were not considered, uh, connectivity. Uh, so that's the purpose of this, and I do appreciate your participation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Hey, Greg, it's Tim Morrill. Um, you said that we had Town of Batavia as a master plan. Is yeah. there a way to get it's some on the idea? Website. It's Pardon? on the website. It's on the website where you can get a hold of the clerk. Um, everything that we've got is available to anybody in a community that wants it. Tim. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? If there's no one else that wishes to speak at this time, I'll call a public hearing uh, closed regarding local law number one of 2021. At this time, I'd like to review the speaker for local law number one of 2021, a moratorium on solar energy. Essentially, uh, part one states that it is a moratorium <laughs> on all solar farms throughout the town until the solar code is reviewed and modified as per the Town of Batavia Planning Board and Town of Batavia Town Board. This is a type two action. Uh, we've answered question number one, which states does a proposed action only involve the legislative adoption of a plan, local law, ordinance, administrative rule or regulation? The answer to that is yes. All other questions are deferred. At this time, I'd like to read this statement. The seeker shall read as follows. In accordance with the State Environmental Quality Review 6 of New York State Code Part 617.5, subsection C, subsection 36, this moratorium is a type two action and requires no additional review or action at this time. Would someone move to approve the minutes of the January 6, 2021 organizational town board meeting? Dan Vito, so moved. Aaron White, second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Dan Vito? Yes. White? Yes. Underhill? Underhill? I wonder if he lost his connection. He's muted, but. What's that? There he is. There he is. There he is. Okay. Underhill? Yes. Post. Yes. Would someone move to accept the minutes? for the January 6, 2021 special town board meeting. Dan Underhill second, or so <laughs> Zambito <laughs> second. 
discussion. Roll call, please. Underhill? Yes. Zambito? Yes. White? Yes. Michael Lack? Yes. Post? Yes. Before we start adoption of resolutions, are there any any speakers that wish to address the town board this evening? If so, please state your name and your address. If there's no one interested in speaking, then I would someone move resolution 31, Sharon. Resolution adopting local law number one of 2021. Whereas proposed local law number one of 2021 of the town of Batavia entitled a local law establishing a town of Batavia moratorium on solar energy systems, which proposed local law in its final form was presented to the town board at the meeting held on January 20th, 2021, and a copy thereof was kept with the town clerk and copies were both laid upon the desk of the members of said town board and mailed to each member of the town board not in attendance at said meeting at least 10 days exclusive of Sundays prior to its final passage. And whereas a public hearing on the advisability of enacting said proposed local law was held on January 20th, 2021, before this town, po town board pursuant to public notice duly published in the daily news according to law, at which time all interested persons <laughs> and whereas all required referrals to the Genesee County Planning Board and the Batavia Town Planning Board, as well as all required publications and postings have been properly completed. And whereas the town board of the town of Batavia, New York is of the opinion that adoption of said proposed local law number one of 2021 is in the best interest of the town of Batavia, New York. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the town board of the town of Batavia, New York, that said proposed local law number one of 2021 entitled a local law establishing a town of Batavia moratorium on solar energy systems B and the same hereby is adopted. And such local law shall be entered into the minutes of the Batavia Town Board. And be it further resolved that certified copies of said local law number one of 2021 be filed with the New York State Secretary of State in accordance with law. And be it further resolved that a summary of this provisions pursuant to local law number one of 2021 be published once in the daily news and then an affidavit of publication thereof be filed with the town clerk. And further resolve that this local law shall become effective as provided by law upon its filing in the office of the Secretary of State. So moved. Second, Michael Ack. Discussion. Roll call, please. White? Yes. Michael Ack? Yes. Zambito? Yes. Underhill? Yes. Post? Yes. Dan, would you read the shortest resolution <laughs> statement of the 2021 year, please? <laughs> resolution authorizing budget transfers for 2020. Resolve the Batavia Town Board hereby authorizes the following budget transfers. As written, so moved. Zambito, second. Discussion. Roll call, please. Underhill? Yes. Zambito? Yes. White? Yes. Michael Ack? Yes. Post? Yes. Resolution number 33, resolved, the Batavia Town Board hereby authorizes the following personnel to attend training workshops. Stephen Tanner, Brooks Hawley, Stephen Tanner, Sarah Saka, Brooks Hawley, Sherry Casey. As written, so moved. Second, Dan Underhill. Discussion. Roll call, please. Post? Yes. Underhill? Yes. 
Michael Ack? Yes. Zambito? Yes. White? Yes. County Resolution 34. Rabies Clinic Highway Facility, whereas the Genesee County Highway Department, Health Department would like to hold a rabies clinic at the Town of Batavia Highway Facility on Thursday, February 4th, 2021, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., and whereas the Highway Superintendent has no objections to this. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Batavia Town Board hereby authorizes the Genesee County Health Department to hold a rabies clinic at the Town of Batavia Highway Facility on Thursday, February 4th, 2021, from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. And be it further resolved that the Genesee County Health Department must provide the town of Batavia certificate of liability insurance, naming the town as additional insured. So moved. Sam Vito, second. I just want to make a clarification that this is a rabies clinic for pets, that we do not have anybody in our employees, and none of the personnel, staff, or constituents have been diagnosed with rabies. This is a clinic for pets. So. I already had my shot. Roll call, is, please. Is that, um, is that going to be from 4 p.m. to 7 or 3 to 7? Yeah. 3 to 7. It okay. says 3 to 7. Wow, the top says uh, 4 to 7. Uh, uh, because they changed it. I, that's my thing. Okay. I'll fix that. Gotcha. It is going to be 3 to 7. Thank you. Here, thank you. Roll call, please. Michael Eck? Yes. Zambito? Yes. White? Yes. Underhill? Yes. Post? Yes. Chad, resolution number 35. Review the incident command system organizational chart contact list emergency preparedness plan. Whereas the town of Batavia has an emergency preparedness plan in place. Whereas the incident command system organizational chart contact list of personnel names and phone numbers have been reviewed and updated to the contact list. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Batavia town board hereby has reviewed the organizational chart contact list and has been updated, a copy of which is the next here too and made part of the minutes. So moved. Second, Sharon White. Discussion. Roll call, please. Chad? Yes. White? Yes. Underhill? Yes. Michael Act? Yes. Post? Yes. Sharon resolution number 36. Approval of change order 2021 01 Operation and Maintenance Town of Batavia Landfill Superfund Site. As written, so moved. Second, Patty Michael Eck. Uh, discussion. Roll call, please. White? Yes. Michael Eck? Yes. Zambito? Yes. Underhill? Yes. Post? Yes. Uh, Dan, resolution number 37. Resolution increase in 2020 budgetary line items for consolidated local st street and highway improvement program chips, paved New York and extreme winter uh, recovery. Whereas the highway superintendent received notification from New York State Department of Transportation that the town of Batavia's physical year 2020-2021 funding for consolidating local street and highway improvement program chips is $82,928.65. Paved New York is $18,929.29. And extreme weather recovery EWR is $15,084.48. Whereas the 2020 budget reflects appropriations of $103,665 for chips, none for paved New York and none for EWR. Now, therefore, be reserved the Tavia Town Board hereby authorized increasing the 2020 budgetary line item as follows. DA 5112.201 paved New York 18,930. DA 5112.202 5, EWR $15,085. DA 3502 paved New York 18,930. And DA 3503 EWR 15,000. 85. Yes, I didn't read those 
quite the same order they were in, but they were all red. Um, so moved. Zambito, second. Yeah, one column is uh, revenue, one is disbursement. Thank you, Dan. Roll call, please. Underhill? Yes. Zambito? Yes. White? Yes. Michael App? Yes. Post? Yes. Uh, resolution number 38. Increasing budgetary line items, freight liner pass through grant. Resolve the Batavia Town Board hereby authorizes the following budget line item increases to account for freight liner pass through grant. Revenue line item A4910 in the amount of $229,450. <clears throat> and expenditure line item A6780.400, $229,450. So moved. Second, Second Dean Underhill. Sharon. Sorry about that, Sharon. That's okay. Discussion. Roll call, please. Post. Yes. Underhill. Yes. Michael Ack. Yes. Zambito. Yes. White. Yes. I'll make a motion to suspend the rules. Second, Zambito. Roll call, please. Underhill? Yes. Zambito? Yes. White? Yes. Michael Ack? Yes. Post? Yes. Patty, resolution 39. Resolution calling public hearing to submit community development block grant application to New York State Office of Community Renewal. Whereas Batavia Town Board wishes to assess the, the availability and advisability of submitting one or more community development block grant applications from 2020 program year to the New York State Office of Community Renewal, the OCR. The funding is to support and development of one or more projects within the town of Batavia. Whereas the town is required to hold a public hearing to provide information to the public and to consider citizen comments regarding the CDBG program and the projects prior to submitting the application for the CDBG funding. Now, therefore, be resolved, Terry Town Board hereby calls for a public hearing whereat all interested parties will be heard and be it further resolved that due to COVID-19, the public hearing will be conducted via Zoom video conferencing on Wednesday, February 17th, 2021 at 7 p.m. and be it further resolved, Batavia, the town clerk is hereby directed to have published a notice in such public hearing at least once in the daily news, at least 10 days before the date scheduled for the public hearing. So moved. Zambito, second. Discussion. Roll call, please. Michael Eck? Yes. Zambito? Yes. White? Yes. Underhill? Yes. Post? Yes. Uh, finally, Chad, resolution number 40. Resolution to authorize purchase of MacBook Air laptop computer. Building department resolved the Batavia Town Board hereby authorizes the purchase of two MacBook Air laptop computers at a cost of $999 each from Apple for the building department. Quote attached. Be it further resolved, the expenditures will be appropriated from the following line items. A3620.200, $1,998. So moved. Second, Sharon White. Discussion. Roll call, please. Zambito? Yes. White? Yes. Underhill? Yes. Michael Ack? Yes. Post? Yes. Someone moved to uh, pay the abstract uh, number 13 of 2020 and abstract number one of 2021, please. So moved. Michael Ack? Second, Zambito. Discussion. Roll call, please. Michael Eck? Yes. Zambito? Yes. White? Yes. Underhill? Yes. Post? Yes. Uh, at this time, um, who do we have? The department has Dan Lang. You got a report for us this evening? Uh, yes, I can give you an update. 
We've been uh, completing day-to-day -day tasks, inspections as we normally do. Uh, yesterday, we did the final walkthrough on the East Pembroke or the uh, Town of Batavia Fire Department Station Two. Um, we can issue that certificate of occupancy conditional upon their site work that is yet to be done, but they can start to move in there. As of tomorrow, we're going to issue that out. Um, to touch base a little bit on the solar, um, I know we had. Earlier on, you guys had the open public hearing and, and I can appreciate and respect everybody's comments on that. Um, I don't think that there is a good time ever to initiate, to put a pause, to put a hold, to, uh, to move forward on something. I don't think there's ever a, a happy time that's going to please everybody. I just wanted to thank everybody who participated and the board in reviewing this, noting that this isn't this hasn't gone as we projected in the comprehensive plan and understanding that that was never our intent to have a massive overload of solar, but it also wasn't our intent to just to, to ban solar. Um, I appreciate everybody's thoughts, concerns. Our doors and our office is always open. Um, obviously it's a little different now. We've got to do everything via phone or via email, but we are always open to questions, concerns, thoughts, and things to move forward with the process. I appreciate you guys putting uh, putting the, the fact out there of getting a board together of individuals who are day-to-day -day individuals in the town of Batavia that can help put a plan together that is effective moving forward. Um, and I'd like to we, offer, Dan, I'd like to offer that the committee can, can uh, have standing members. Uh, they don't necessarily need to be residents of the town of Batavia, but anybody who's competent, qualified, and has an interest in the future of our community, uh, welcome to send me their information to the to the town supervisor, to the town clerk, or to you, anybody. Uh, we'll collate a number of interested parties after we get some press. So hopefully uh, everyone will respond and, and to our uh, request for participation. And I, and I do want to thank you for your efforts um, in keeping the wheels on this uh, throughout this past year with the pandemic. Uh, I know that was one of your hot topics to do uh, this time a year ago. And I apologize uh, for the loss of traction um, due to the economic frailty of the community and the unknowns. We're in a, a much better place uh, as far as knowing where we're headed uh, financially into the future. Our community continues to grow. Uh, and, and I appreciate your, uh, your contributions and you can enlighten us on how many other projects are in the pipeline. Sure. We have, um, well, before we jump out of solar, we do have two applications right now that are in the middle of, we have received the full applications that have gone to the county that are in review with the planning board. Um, after that, we've got quite a few projects that have not submitted a full submittal to the town. So those will be obviously put on hold now that the moratorium was put through. Um, we've been de dealing with other developers. Um, I'm excited about a couple potential projects that we have coming to the town of Batavia. Um, can't release the names as of this point because we have not received a full application, but we've been working on a lot of residential development, a few more commercial projects, and we've got some other, uh, other things coming down the pipeline that we can streamline through as effective as, as we can. Um, I've been meeting with them throughout today as well via Zoom and a few other things. Um, overall, we've been busy, we remain steady, and, and I'm looking forward to taking on 2021. I mean, that's, it's in front of us, let's get it. So that's about all I have to report tonight. And the COVID beard looks nice. Thank you, but that uh, that was from this morning, Chad. I just, <laughs> I forgot to shave. You Langs are uh, a hearty people. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's cold out there. No, but thank you for, uh, thank you for your support and for everything that the board and everybody does. I mean, Kathy and John, um, Teresa, we've all been we've all been working on this together. The solar is, is exhausting, it's draining. I understand that there's going to be a lot of obstacles moving forward, but it's not one person, it's a team that does it. And I can only, I mean, without Teresa, without everybody being involved in this together as one, we wouldn't move too far. So I can I can honestly say that I appreciate everybody's input all the way across the board and everybody's doing fantastic as far as I'm concerned. So. Thank you. Well, I, I applaud your aptitude and uh, the rest of the staff's aptitude in getting us up to speed on Zoom meetings. Um, this has actually opened the door for a number of people to contribute and participate in town meetings and town conversations uh, that chose not to drive all the way up and, and, and uh, 
sit in a, a hard chair for an hour or two, uh, as many evenings a month as it takes to get this stuff for me. And hopefully we'll get more participation. Um, but um, thank thank you and thank your staff for me. Uh, I know I read the reports, everything is um, up to spec, everything is done. Um, there's, there's nothing hanging out. You guys are catching it all. And um, I do applaud your efforts, so thank you. You're supposed to be there. Just an old fucking hippie. What's that? Just have a, uh, right. yeah. Yeah. nothing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Other than highway department reported this month, the staff has been pretty much working on uh, dead trees and working on maintaining roadsides, uh, clearing brush, and, uh, um, you know, negating the consequence of the ash borer. We got a lot of ash trees in the community's thoroughfares and those trees are obviously dead. And so there's a, a lot of work for the guys um, when they're not plowing snow. So they've been keeping busy with that. Um, water sewer operations continue to uh, ex expand and uh, inspections are consistent. Um, new construction continues uh, throughout all the service areas. Uh, the sewer operations continue to uh, uh, be maintained and plans are imminent for uh, reconstruction of another pump station in Batavia. And I just wanted to comment um, as part of the water sewer operations, you know, we review utility bills. You all came in and signed vouchers today. And then on one of the electric bills, uh, one of the 26 electric bills we have for all the parcels we own, uh, there was a note. Um, from the engineer that was comparing energy usage at the Agra Park pump station. And just, just so you know, um, this is a consequence of your staff's actions, uh, always trying to save money. Um, they proposed a project to upgrade a relatively new sanitary sewer pump station at Ag Park Drive. And you may have questioned of, you know, why this thing's only eight years old, why are we upgrading it? Um, one, one reason is the flows have increased substantially and they've almost doubled in, in uh, eight years that it's uh, been in construction. Um, but looking at the energy bills, uh, just, just to give you a comparative analysis of how this, how this funds itself and, and the payback to the community, um, everybody that's using these utilities is in 2019, uh, the month of December, there were 12 million gallons pumped uh, of effluent. So, um, and that 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 took uh, 16,903 kilowatts of energy. Uh, the same period of time in December of 2020 showed nearly 20 million gallons of effluent pumped. So there's a a significant, uh, you know, almost a uh, probably close to a 75 or 80 percent increase in pumpage um, but our, our energy usage declined by by 20 percent so we've got this pretty substantial reduction our, our our kilowatt usage only ended up being around 14,000 for the same period of time pumping nearly twice as much effluent well that converts to dollars and cents um, our bill this month was two thousand dollars if we hadn't done anything it would have been closer to $4,500. Um, and we may have had some events where we couldn't uh, handle the flow. Um, this is just an example. This is one small example of one of 20 pump stations and the entire operation we have um, with the engineering and the water sewer and the highway operation that those staff members are so focused on finding ways to save this community money um, that this payback it's probably going to be less than nine years to pay for the entire project, just in energy savings. I just wanted to pass that on. Um, and that concludes my commit, my uh, department reports. Um, my report on expenditures and revenues is available for your review. Um, as you're aware, I, I, I uh, extended a declaration of emergency to stay consistent with the Genesee County state of New York and the United States in response to the pandemic. Um, so that we can respond to this in the speed that we need to, uh, as this ever changing disease continues to course through our region. I also want to inform you there'll be a GAM meeting tomorrow via zoom at 7 PM. Uh, would hope everyone that can attend will attend. 
Um, and I will be appointing a committee uh, of up to a dozen people to uh, including town staff and community members uh, for review and amendments to the comp plan and zoning regulations in regard to solar. But I take it this time, uh, we'll put out a notice to the press. But at this time, anybody watching this, um, please tell your associates, your neighbors, your friends, uh, if you have an interest in serving uh, on a committee, please let the town supervisor at supervisor at townofbatavia.com or the town clerk uh, know. Uh, we have a website, let us know, send us an email, uh, call the clerk um, with your information and uh, hopefully we can get you included on this as we move this uh, uh, review of the zoning on solar law through. And that concludes my report this evening. Are there any um, issues the clerk would like to address the board with? Town clerk's report for December. Uh, we collected 2,953.50, remitted $2,445.77 to the supervisor for the local share. Our taxes are in full swing and they seem to be coming coming in steadily. Um, Wind down now the S companies are starting to come in and um, and closing out the end of the year stuff. Are you noticing very fewer come in with the Warsaw address being on the tax bill? Yeah, so far that's working out pretty good. I'm there's a little things that we have to work out, but other than that, it's been coming in. Great. Right. Anything else, clerk? I do not. Thank you. Are there any committee reports this evening? Well, Sharon, I guess you know what time it is. Is there any old business? There is no old business. Thank you. Chad, what's new in the hood? What's the new business? Oh, uh, no, no new business at all, sir. All right, nice, uh, nice haircut yourself. <laughs> at this time, I take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn Dan Underhill. Second, Zambito. Roll call, please. Underhill? Yes. Zambito? Yes. White? Yes. Michael Ack? Yes. Post? Yes. Again, thank you all this evening for your participation. Um, just remember, Thomas Jefferson said it best. It's, it's not a community of the people, by the people, for the people. It's of the people, by the people, and for the people that communicate and participate. So thank you all. Mm -hmm. See you soon. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg.